Virtually all unemployment problems are worse when there is a shortfall of aggregate demand. So when unemployment is quite high, typically there's an interaction between structural problems and cyclical problems. Uh, both the good and the bad news is that we know how to fix a shortfall in aggregate demand. The bad news is that right now, basically, we can't do it. So here's a simple way to think about aggregate demand problems. Some set of wages in an economy are sticky in nominal terms. They're sticky downward. They may be sticky for legal reasons. They may be sticky because of unions. They may be sticky just for morale reasons, that employees don't like taking wage cuts. And so what you do is you keep the ones you want at higher wages and you simply fire the ones you decide you don't want rather than have them be kept around as malcontents. So basically, when there's downward pressure on nominal values, there's overwhelming evidence that in economies, the rate of employment goes up considerably. And that's basically the aggregate demand problem. Uh, Spain, obviously, is suffering from the aggregate demand problem, in addition to a number of other structural problems. And as I pointed out, when you have aggregate demand problems, all of your structural problems suddenly become much worse. Uh, so what to do about aggregate demand problems? There are two potential remedies. Uh, fiscal policy and monetary policy. Let me say a bit on each. Uh, fiscal policy is very difficult to use, in my view, as a remedy for aggregate demand problems, mostly because fiscal, pro fiscal policy takes a long time to wind up, and modern economies cannot increase uh, government spending that rapidly, that effectively. Governments already spend a considerable amount of GDP. So if you look historically for examples of successful fiscal policy, you might say, well, the United States during World War II, uh, that may or may not be true, but that was a major war. It's hard to think of something coming along to Spain right now that would serve a comparable function. Uh, also, Spain has a lot of infrastructure. Arguably, it has too much infrastructure. Uh, the airport at Madrid is much nicer than anything we have back home. So the notion that there's some low-hanging fruit that you could increase productivity quite a bit by just building more infrastructure, at least for Spain, uh, probably is not the case. One way to think about the impotence of fiscal policy is to ask yourself this question as a thought experiment. If a fiscal authority woke up one morning and pledged to target an inflation rate of 4% a year, what would you think? You would think this is absurd. You would think a fiscal authority could not possibly bring that about. Uh, that, in essence, is saying the fiscal authority cannot so effectively manage aggregate demand. Uh, basically, we all know this. Uh, monetary policy is the other alternative, and part of the problem of Spain in this regard is the Eurozone. So the Eurozone is imposing one monetary policy on high productivity countries and the same monetary policy on low productivity countries. Ideally, what you would want is a looser monetary policy for low productivity countries to make their problems with nominal wage stickiness less severe. Uh, but that's not what we get. There's a monetary policy essentially run by Germans. Uh, it's run in the interests of Germany, which uh, I'm not sure there's in particular anything wrong with, but it is a problem for Spain. And the problem is just that Spain has an eternally tight monetary policy. It is like being under a gold standard, except much worse, under a gold standard, you could at least hope uh, they would discover the new world and there would be a sudden influx of the <laughs> supply of gold. Uh, under the euro standard, there's really nothing comparable. Uh, to think of some benefits of a looser monetary policy, one is the nominal wage stickiness problem becomes less severe. You get people back to work by inflating and you don't need nominal wages to go down. There's a greater demand for labor. A higher rate of inflation also lowers the value of outstanding debt. So debt overhang as a problem goes down. And finally, monetary policy gives you a way to bail out your banks fairly quickly, fairly, quickly, fairly effectively, and without having to go through what is possibly a series of rounds of self-defeating austerity. So you have at least three major overwhelming reasons why a looser monetary policy would be good for Spain. Uh, but we also know that being in the Eurozone, that's simply not going to be coming. Uh, monetary policy will be what it will be. The charter of the ECB is committed to price stability. Changing that charter, it was deliberately set up to be difficult to change, uh, and there we have it. There's a final possibility, uh, which I worry about a great deal, and that is the notion that some countries can be at a point where even if monetary policy were to change, it wouldn't help them very much. So I'm pretty sure Greece is at this point, that if somehow more money were to be injected into the Greek economy, it would leave immediately. 
So even if somehow uh, Merkel were to wake up and decide a 6% inflation target were a good thing for the Eurozone, at this point it wouldn't help Greece because the marginal Euro does not stay in Greece. Uh, I'm not sure whether Spain right now is at this point, but I think quite possibly it is, that even though the core deposits in Spanish banks have not seen that much outflow, I suspect the marginal Euro, there's a considerable amount of outflow, and foreign deposits in Spanish banks, there's been a lot of outflow, and that to me suggests there's a very real possibility that maybe a looser monetary policy would have worked two years ago, but right now we're quite literally at the point where Spain cannot itself receive a looser monetary policy because the financial transmission mechanisms are essentially broken. Uh, so I don't actually uh, have good news today, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Uh, nominal stickiness is a real problem. Excessively tight monetary policy is one of Spain's major problems. It quite possibly was possible to fix two years ago, not politically possible, but economically possible. Today it's still politically impossible, and now it's probably also economically impossible. Uh, that in a nutshell is my overview of the topic of aggregate demand and unemployment.